Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for sticking it out all day. Um, we're excited to be here. I guess we're wrapping it up. Um, I'll start briefly um, with a quick overview of where our team is. Uh, it's really fun to go to practice every day. Um, I'll back it up to last spring uh, when we had our first meeting after the end of uh, last season. And those of you who've watched us play, you know, come the end of the season, we feel like we can roll out the balls and compete with anyone um, and in any given day beat people, which is a great quality. But what I did was sort of tell them, put up the analytics and the stats of all 16 teams that were in the Sweet 16. And I said, actually, we're, we don't belong in this company yet. From a statistical level, we weren't day in and day out as good as those teams. And so let's embrace the grind every single day from now until next season so that we can bring our swagger and our confidence to say we can play with anyone, but also have the ability of having worked every single day to believe that when the ball goes up, that's where we belong, that we expect to win, not we can win. Uh, and I think the team has really bought into that notion. Um, they practice with a different energy every day. It's been really fun. I will briefly talk about these two. Um, they have been starters for three years heading into their fourth year. Um, their first season, they both had stellar individual accomplishments, but we weren't good enough as a team. I think at that time, the cool thing might have been to leave or go find success elsewhere. But beyond being committed to the Cal degree, they were committed to me and our program. And I just think um, we have a chance to have a really special year because everyone in our program wants to win for them and what they've done for us. Uh, add to that a couple new players. Um, you know, in particular, Mackenzie Forbes, a dynamic freshman who just kind of does a little bit of everything. Um, and our first grad transfer, Rose Caldwell, who changes the air in a room when she walks in it. Um, I, I think we have uh, a lot of right pieces to have a special year, and that's what I want for these two young women sitting here and for our program. Lastly, I will say our opener is on November 6th. A lot of you are here now, so I hope you can get to the game that day, but more importantly, uh, and I think every coach should be telling their players, vote on that day first. It's November 6th. We should all show up and vote, especially women, and then start the NCAA season. So just my shout out for that. So go vote and then come see us play on November 6th. We'd also like to introduce Cal SID MC Barrett. And so now we'll open it up to questions from media. Please remember to identify yourself and wait for a microphone before asking a question. Jim McGill, BarronSider.com. Uh, Lindsay, you've had teams in recent years where maybe there was a lot of youth on the team, maybe short bench, short on depth. This year it seems like the pieces are kind of all coming together. Do you feel like with these first few weeks of practice, you see a team that can really compete for a Pac-12 championship this year? I do. Um, I can think these guys would say something like, we're coming different. Is that how you say it? <laughs> It feels different. Um, you know, I've said, we have a chance to be really good. That doesn't guarantee anything, but it puts you in the conversation. I think it's our most, um, our most depth and uh, capable pieces since the Final Four team. Um, I think that team, you know, as I can see Leija sitting here would tell you, had also a really special focus and chemistry. I think this team, in their own way, is reminiscent just in terms of every single day wanting to show up for one another. Um, but yes, we do have depth. Uh, we do have veteran leadership and youth. Um, it, and I think that's the, the formula. I think layering kind of different pieces and different classes together often you know, gives you the chance at having a winning team. I think we have those things. Um, and I think our, our aspirations are those of a championship um, and to really be one of the top teams in the country. Uh, ben Parker, GoldenMirrorReport.com. This is a question for both uh, Asia and Christine. Uh, just talk about what it's like being seniors now on this team. And um, just kind of, is there any additional kind of pressure? I talked to Lindsay also during lunch, but is there any additional pressure you guys are feeling knowing it's your senior year to kind of get over that hump and make a deeper run in the tournament than you have before? I'm sorry, can you repeat the first question? Oh, just like how excited are you guys to, to finally be seniors? What is it like to be seniors on this team? And then just given it's your last year, do you feel any additional kind of pressure to make a deep run in the tournament knowing this is, this is your last shot? Um, I think we're excited to be seniors. Um, it's been a, a long journey. We've been through a lot. I think now we feel, like Coach G said, we have the pieces um, to do something special this year. And I think we're excited about that. Um, I mean, we're, we're ready to get this thing going. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we are. We're excited um, with our team, our team dynamics. 
um, how we feel personally, individually, trying to get our bodies right, our minds right for a long season that we're trying to prepare for. Um, but yeah, excitement is probably one of the few words um, that we're feeling right now. Kevin Dan at Pac-12.com. Uh, Coach, congratulations on getting married over, uh, I guess it was about a month ago or so. Uh, just what uh, what stands out, to, obviously, you know, big day. What stands out to you? What was it like for you to have, it looked like the whole team was there. And then for Asia and Christine, what was, what stands out to you about that day and, and being at your coach's wedding? Well, thank you. Uh, um, I can tell you that I was never the, the you know, young person dreaming about a wedding growing up. You know, I was thinking about other things, you know, ball movement and offenses and that kind of nerdy <laughs> stuff. Um, but when it, when it came around, I think I've been, you know, pretty open that this team has always been part of my family. Um, and so when Patrick and I chose to um, do a wedding, it was, it was an absolute no-brainer that we were going to include the team. They are, they are our family, not just my family, Patrick's family too. And I wanted to have it be less about look at us or this is about us and more about a celebration of our family, including, you know, our son Jordan and the people that are really imp important to us. Um, and so it was beyond my wildest dreams um, having the team there. Um, they were part of it. Um, they were with all the other important people in our lives as well. Um, and it was just unbelievably special. And that's something with this team, I think I'll have that particular bond with, you know, for the rest of, of my life. Um, I liked how you were showing that ring off too while you were talking. <laughs> um, but it was definitely a special day. Um, and I'm happy that everybody on our team um, decided to come and, you know, experience this celebration for her. And as much as she puts effort into us, we wanted to show, we wanted to be there for her um, and her new journey as well. So it was definitely an emotional day. Um, but we have fun too. You know, we have our, our dancing going as well. She wanted that, uh, she wanted to incorporate that, so. Adding on, um, it felt like a movie. Like when I saw Lindsay and she's wearing those beautiful shoes that she wore for her wedding. And um, I saw her and I like kind of gasped like super loud and like got teary eyed because I just, that's my, like that's like my mom. Like I look up to her, that's my mentor. Um, I was just so, like, it's, like, weird. Be, like, this is my last time I'm going to be here in front of you guys, like, on this stage with Lindsay and TZ. So I don't know. I'm getting so emotional just because, like, that wedding brings back so many memories, different memories, feelings, the vibe, the music, the laugh, um, Jordan playing in the dirt while she's um, doing her vows. It's just, like, that's how our team feels, though. Like, that's just not, that's just one part of, our family, of our team. And it was cool, like this year, Lindsay decides that she wants us to be in her wedding. And then you see like, that's just a small part. And yeah, I'm excited. Ladies, um, Lindsay referenced uh, presenting you with all the analytics of the Sweet 16 teams. Was that this, this spring during the tournament? A and what, were you in your meeting room downstairs and it was up on the, on the big screen? And, yeah. and just maybe, could you take me through that and, and what did that do to sort of show you how far you c can come to, to reach that level and, and maybe what was that like when she did that? For me, it's like, I was like, it's not luck. Like me and TZ, we have experience now. Seeing that made me realize we have to get better. It's not one game, it's not one practice, it's a whole entire season, starting from off season. So it's um, our off season we started off just new and fresh and that's what really kept us going now we're still fresh we're still feeling new like every practice feels different and that's what we're just going to keep going throughout the season Asia, Asia, um, what was the, what were there numbers all over were there what, what did it look like a lot of numbers um and i know as for me as a basketball player i don't really look at numbers too much i just really try to work on my mental and my skill um, skill set, but seeing those numbers on the on the wall or on the board is is very important. Um, everything you do contributes to um, just being successful, and I didn't really realize that. So I'm paying attention to the little things as well as you know wins and losses are, are very big, but 
shooting percentage, rebounding percentage, um, and, and all of those that go into it. Uh, it makes me really just dial into what I need to do or what we need to do as for the team to be successful. And Janie, just to, just to talk about that for a second, um, first thing is, a lot of you know MC, you know how good she is. I, I think I use her in this role different than some, differently than some coaches. Um, I said, MC, this is, this is the message I want to get across to the team. And I talked about some things. Can you help me with a visual presentation of that? And her ability to kind of take my basketball thought and put it into like a, a PowerPoint was pretty cool. Um, and also, the, a lot of you know, I'm, I'm sort of relentlessly positive. And so at a time when maybe the players expected, you know, in, in a, not in a bad way, but for me to come in, it was the end of the season and say, okay, like, we can do this. Like, we can be this team next year. I sort of said, mm, let's check ourselves. We're not there. We weren't there yet. And, and I wanted to motivate them in a different, different way. And actually, Kiana Smith, our sophomore, um, said to me just the other day as we've been going through practice, you know, remember that slideshow? We need to look at that again. You know, just to kind of remind, remind ourselves of, are we doing the little things every day? Because I will put our players up in a competitive standpoint against anyone. Like, game is on the line, I'll put the ball in this kid's hands and have Christine be out there. And I, I don't worry about our ability in a big game situation to rise up and try and compete. But what I wanted them to understand is it's the day-to-day -day grind that separates you, actually. And it's sort of the, the stuff that happens behind closed doors a little bit. Hey, you don't know me. Um, <laughs> Malaysia Pac-12 Networks. Um, for the players, can you talk about, uh, I'm assuming you both want to play professionally in some capacity when you're done. How do you balance staying present in the moment, but like checking draft boards, or am I going to go in the first round? Is my stock rising or falling? Like talk about kind of those emotions going in, knowing like this is the last ride. Yeah. You want it? Um, I can go first. Um, at this point, I'm really not thinking about it, but I know I, eventually I would have to. Um, but I'm really just trying to stay in the present moment. When that time comes where it's like, OK, this is where you need to pay attention to it, I'll go to it. But definitely the anxiety is, is hitting um, of not knowing where my future is going to be. Of course, I want to prepare for that as best as I can, but I can't, I can't predict what's going to happen. So. Um, I try to keep that to a minimum, the anxiety to a, a minimum. Um, going off of that, for me, I don't really believe in draft boards or um, preseason predictions because it's somebody else's opinion. And what my opinion that I have for myself might be different than someone else's opinion of me. Therefore, I don't believe in that. And I, of course, it's motivating and like, it's just, it's not real. So I'm just excited for our team. I really want to win. I really want to go far in the tournament. I want to, I want a Pac-12 championship. Like, I want to do big things. So I'm not really worried about where I land. I want to, I want this season to be for us. Hi, guys. Uh, Anne again with the Pac-12 Networks. Coach, uh, another, the depth you talked about uh, with this roster, yay. And then a guard-heavy roster, how you've been able to use your guards to complement players like uh, Anigwe. So help us understand your philosophy with this year's batch of guards. And also, how did the Caldwell situation uh, present itself, and how are you able to get her to Cal, or how did she pursue that from her end? Sure. Um, well, to talk about the positional thing first, I think um, I would say that um, we have more skilled guards that can do a variety of things than in recent years. Um, you know, at times, a lot of times, I think we'll have three players on the floor who, who are point guard types, right? Meaning that they can score, pass, facilitate. Um, uh, and that's a good thing, right? Um, you know, back when Lasia played, we played two point guard, two WNBA point guards together at the same time. And that was really effective for us because people can't, you know, game plan as well for that. Um, in addition, with the, the multiple guards, we've been able to take some of our big guards and play them at the four spot. So Jalen Brown, um, who you know jumps over the backboard to get rebounds, you know, can play the four spot. Or Mackenzie Forbes, who's a little bit bigger and just really savvy. So we've been able to do some things where we can get four guards on the court at once. And at the same time, you know, b besides Christine, we have 
post depth with someone like a CJ West, who is, you know, pretty, you know, formidable in her own right, or, you know, Alasia Styles, who's more of a true post player. So uh, we can do a number of different things trying to get those various guards on the floor in different capacities. Um, and at the end of the day, just having more players who can make shots and make plates spreads the floor out. Um, I, think, I think we will have more offensive fluidity than we have in a while. Um, in terms of Rese, um, you know, I'm very intentional with, with recruiting. It's not like we recruit all the good players out there. It's not like we go after every transfer. I try to fit, think about who fits. And so, um, you know, I've known Rese for a long time, since she was probably eighth or ninth grade. Um, she didn't come to us the first time, and that's okay. You know, you want players to find their, their, their paths, but um, when she decided that she was gonna, you know, graduate from Texas Tech and decide to do a fifth year as a grad transfer year, uh, I think we were, we were on her radar right away because we had had a relationship already. Um, and I think her decision was not about this one year, although with a grad transfer, you have to be very, so we're bringing someone in for a year and she's only gonna be here for a year and it has to be the right fit. There isn't a lot of time to grow with someone. So the year is important, but I think she was making a decision for 40 years and talked to me about, you know, personally how I could help get her to the next thing that she might want to do. I think, you know, she could be the first female GM of an, in the NBA, and I want to help her get there. She wants to play overseas. I want to help her get there. We talked about playing with these two and making a deep run in the tournament. So there were a lot of, I think, high-level conversations that happen. And it's funny because she's only been here for a month or two, but sometimes I'll look at her and say, how have you not been here for four years? It's so right. seamless, right? And then on the court, she is, you know, you have Mackenzie Forbes coming in who is, really talented and a normal freshman. You know, you're a freshman. You're trying to figure out how to get to class and eat and get there. And Rese is a grown woman, you know, who's <laughs> telling us what to do. It's different, right? So I think it's been an, a really interesting to see those two newcomers just from different, you know, diametric experiences, but both have really fit in so well. Um, and it's a credit to the returners because we could have thrown, I think, anyone in the mix now. And they're so solid. They're ready to welcome anyone. But both of those two young women have made incredible impacts in a short time. I got it, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Lindsay. Joan Bombasani from Pac-12 Networks. Congratulations again on Thanks. the wedding. It's very interesting listening to you too. Um, just your maturity the last few years, how you've grown and your confidence. Um, I'm impressed. You can tell you have very good energy, what's going on here. Okay, and the confidence. But you talk specifically, and it's really important, about what you learned in the spring from the other teams. So Asia, for both of you, wh what do you guys have to do specific, because you talk numbers here, right? Mm -hmm. what, what part of your game do you have to improve on, okay, individually, and what part of your game as a team has to improve so that when you're looking up, people are looking at you next time? Mm -hmm. um, personally, I would say, like I said, I'm not a numbers person, so I'm not trying to have necessarily a double-double every game. Right. I'm not trying to um, have just a statistical number every game. I'm not, that's not my goal. Whatever I can do consistently that's going to help the team, that's what I'm going to do. Scoring, getting steals, um, assisting the ball, uh, rebounds, however, if I get them, jump up and get them, whatever. But um, I think it's, it's just being intentional with everything that I do. So whatever I need to do, whether it's being vocal, that's what I need to do consistently. So um, that's pretty much for my goal of, of being that player who wants their team to go far in the tournament. Ironically, I am a numbers person. So um, <laughs> uh, for three years, I've been like, one more game, one more rebound, one more finish, we could have won the game. And now I'm like, Christine, stay in the present. Stop thinking about numbers. Start thinking about like time as just rel being relative, like again, being intentional. I just want to stay in the moment and just realize that, OK, this is my first practice of this season. And I just want to have fun. And I want to be light. I want to be fresh. And I want to be happy. And that's why I've really been focusing on this summer, just staying in the present, staying in the moment, and not thinking too far ahead not thinking about the next day, thinking about today, how I'm gonna finish my midterm um, after this interview, and um, just kind of staying day to day. And what TZ, or Asia, as you guys know her, said, just being intentional. And with the numbers I showed him, it wasn't, it wasn't numbers up there to say, okay, we should be focused more on 
this category, that category, but more to show that if we want to finish in the top 16 or 10 or 8 or 4 teams, there are categories that happen all year that make you elite. It's not winning one game. And so I wanted to actually show them that being present and being in the moment every day in practice matters because now all of a sudden we have more points per possession or we have more defensive rebounds or we're not just hoping to win in March. We have set ourselves up where we're supposed to win. Cheryl Coward, HoopBeat.com. Um, since you guys first met with the media a few weeks ago, uh, Coach, especially you stressed um, increased depth and the ability to hold full practices <laughs> all the time or, you know, better practices. Um, since then, uh, with the newcomers, especially Rose, have you had any positive surprises or things that you noticed that you weren't aware of before to, you know, and help the team? Things that you just, you know, were, yeah. weren't that's, aware of. That's a really good question. So we, we've had 10 practices. Um, you know, with the days off in between and all that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm really being diligent about cutting our time off. We're not practicing very long. This is a team, I think, that can go far in postseason. As Christine referenced, I want them fresh. I want them feeling good. Sometimes more is not always more. I'm, I'm very particular about that. So I think we've accomplished what I've wanted to accomplish every practice. The things that stand out, because I think we spoke before we started real practice, the enthusiasm level and the focus level is, I think, exceptional. Um, they're able to adjust on the fly in practice when I change something, when I get on them, when I want something better. Um, I think we've seen more guards who can do more things. So I don't you know, have to design, hey, you cut here to get the ball here, to get it to Christine right in this spot. We're just like, okay, play. Make the right read. Make the right basketball play. And I think we've seen that fluidity come through. Um, you know, I'll give you an example from yesterday. We were scrimmaging our, our male practice squad, um, and I had done several subs and several rotations. And so there was a group in that, you know, at the end of the game, at the end of the scrimmage, um, did not include – Asia and did not include Christine, for example. Um, and I called a timeout and I said, okay, let's run a play. I said, I'm not subbing anyone in. You five right here, let's, let's make a play. And so I kind of ran the thing through Rase. I said, you can do option one, option two, you can make this read. Um, and we, we go through and we make a shot. And I don't know in the past if I had these two out, you know, if we'd have felt confident just to run something, you know, in a last second situation. So that's an example of the team being a little bit, a little bit different. Um, just the maturity level, I don't think we've had too many bad moments of practice. I'm not saying we're perfect, we don't make every shot all the time, but in terms of the feel of practice, it's been at a higher level consistently. I do think they're taking advantage of every moment like we've been asking them to. Hey, thanks so much, Coach. Um, I think there's one more question. <laughs> Oh, Lindsay, along what you were just discussing, I know you were at Warriors practice last week, and, and what you just said is a, is a lot of what Steve Kerr is doing right now with a more veteran team. The younger players are practicing early on their own a little bit. It, did you two dis have a chance to discuss practice philosophy, or did you share that with him, or vice versa, or are these just separate ideas? Uh, so I was there last week, and we, you know, he's always super gracious with his time and asks me how we're doing all the time, and I'm like, you're the Warriors, that's Kevin Durant, like, you want to talk about my team? <laughs> um, but uh, it's funny, we were talking about training camp, and he is, he is a less is more kind of guy. We talked about, you know, how long their season went and how you keep people fresh. Um, so I would say I'm, I'm sort of more aligned with that type of philosophy anyway. Um, but in particular this year, the NCAA moved – the, you know, the practice thing up where you can practice 42 days before your first game and they move the first game up, you know. Um, so exciting that it's November 6th, Election Day, where we'll all be voting and then going to the, the game. But, um, but other than that, it's too long, right? Like, I, I don't want, you know, young people need to be excited. They need to be fresh. They need to feel a certain way in February when we're on a trip to Pullman. And so for me to grind them out now because I want one more rep or one more possession doesn't make sense to me. So it's nice validation to see that that's what, you know, the Warriors are about. Um, obviously, they have different, you know, system going on. But, um, yeah, we want to make sure that we are thinking about their bodies, thinking about their minds all the time. It's not just what they can give me, but what I can give them to be, you know, as fresh and ready for the whole season as possible. So it's neat to see that alignment um, with, with the Warriors as well. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now we're done. Thank you so, so much. Thank you all. We Thank appreciate you, you guys.